I am interested to find out a different determinants of lifelong health. So for example, I was trained as a pediatrician and there are certain infections in childhood or adolescence that can increase your cancer risk when you grow up. And we're giving vaccines to prevent these infections and therefore have prevented a lot of cancer cases. So these are very good examples of determinants of lifelong health. Uh, but it's not just about infection. We believe there are certain elements of lifestyles or life choices that can uh, determine our lifelong health. And I would like to discover more and investigate what we can do about it and improve the health of the next generation. Um, for me, I would say is the being able to look at a, look at a bigger picture. Um, as a doctor, you do help individual patients managing health problems day in, day out. But after a certain amount of time, you will start to realize, oh, hang on, these things shouldn't have happened if someone tried to prevent them at the first place. So a lot of my work in population health is to look at the past of patients who unfortunately developed cancer and try to identify contributing factors or risk factors of cancer to see whether we can prevent next cancer to happen. So by looking at a bigger picture, we probably won't be able to help this particular patient uh, because we can't prevent this cancer. But uh, as a society, we're making progress with preventing more cancers to happen. So I guess they give you a different sense of achievement. Yeah, on the flip side, uh, you do need to be patient. Uh, because a lot of our work is uh, just tiny steps, incremental changes, and there will be a pathway leading to a greater cause, but it won't be immediately apparent, I would say. Um, a few years ago, we published a report demonstrating that people who drink more coffee are not more or less likely to develop cancer compared to people who drink less coffee, um, within reasonable amount, of course. Um, this type of result is not as attractive as you know, either you find coffee causes cancer or coffee prevent cancer. Um, but recently the, the EARC or International Agency of Cancer Research have reviewed uh, all the later better evidence and removed coffee from the suspect cancer causes list. Um, you can argue that this may you know, have not come impact on health and agriculture, climate change, etc. But the truth is, what we can control is we make sure this tiny piece of evidence that we generate is robust with some sort of uh, confidence in there. And other than that, there's, there's no immediate feedback of how much achievement you've made for uh, the human health. For population health and now in the future, I would say we need all sorts of expertise. Um, you will find people out there advocating health policies and implement changes. Uh, there are people generating evidence and make sure what we're doing is based on solid knowledge. Um, there are also people who go into the communities and listen to patients who have breast cancers, for example, and understand what they and their family and friends are going through. Um, so we do need a variety of uh, expertise. The most recent thing I heard was the, uh, the group of the groups globally and in Oxford as well, uh, they're trying to identify the best lifestyles that's not only good for our own health, but also good for our environment, for our planet, basically. And this makes total sense to me because we're not able to um, have a good, healthy generation uh, if we don't leave a healthy environment behind. So whatever your background is from, uh, talk to people and find your pathway and I wish you best luck.